a new ordinance in the village of Sherwood that has a couple of families crying foul. The village now prohibits owning chickens in residential areas. And as Jennifer Ann Wilson tells us, one fam family is feeling singled out. After two years living and evicted. Technically sentencing them to die because where are they going to go in the middle of winter? And they're two years old. They're not young hens anymore. They're middle aged. A new village ordinance bans residential chickens in the village of Sherwood and Bauer is crying foul. They specifically targeted us, the two families who have chickens and said no. Changing the ordinances they have with chickens and there's a reason for that. Chickens are a great addition to many backyards. Chickens can be used for food, eggs, meat, broth. They're also a wonderful addition to our garden. They'll eat just lots of insects around our yard. They'll aerate our soils. They'll, they'll help us with weeds and eat weed seeds. Uh, a couple of things to think about with chickens, especially in wintertime. You can get online and you can hear all kinds of different advice with chickens. Really, most of the chickens that we have here in Wyoming, as long as we keep them dry, we don't necessarily need to heat them, although that's okay. We need to provide them with food, water. During the winter months, we'll need to keep that water thawed. If you want to produce eggs with chicken, you need to think about making sure you keep 14 hours of light on them. Have that light start in the morning, so we're waking them up in the morning with the light, not shutting it down right at night. The most important thing for success with chickens in our backyard is to think about predators. All over Wyoming, we need to think about coyotes, foxes, raccoons, skunks, uh, other pets, dogs, cats, um, even snakes and weasels. If we take care of those things, we'll have success with our chickens in our backyards. So good luck. This is Hudson Hill with the University of Wyoming Extension. You're watching from the girls. She doesn't really the uh, two brown ones are named Ginger and Patty. The gray one is named Raina, and the speckled one is named Lottie. They're good for fertilizing the lawn. They'll eat the bugs in the garden, and they give us their eggs. It was a natural progression. It was the next step in the Go Green lifestyle. <laughs> We grow vegetables, we have a landscape company, and raise chickens. Lots of um, different varieties, cucumarans, both a good uh, meat and uh, egg. Well, the chickens definitely have been part of the process in clearing this land because it was so overgrown, and um, they came through with the goats and have kind of cleared everything out for us. Move the coop, uh -huh. we're built on trailers, and oh, right. uh, just move them into different parts. So this Take is one. their coop. Um, they uh, put themselves up at night when the sun goes down and we just close that door. We just keep changing the area that they live in and they just keep giving back to the earth. Yeah, you can lift it from there. Look, right there, the little one. Oh, look at that. That one looks like a monarch oh, butterfly. We do have hawks, especially hawks. And Rusty Bray, the rooster, tells them when a hawk is coming. He gives, us, he gives a special call and they all hit the deck. I mean, they get under these things, they get in here, they get under the trees at least. He watches over his ladies. The hens had a real nice hen fight just a while ago. And Rusty was kind of monitoring it because he thought he might have to. I'm just hanging out in the chicken coop. Oh, ladies, let's just get along. I just threw them some cantaloupe and uh, some potatoes and some walnut shells and uh, they're kind of pecking at each other, enjoying the offerings. 
You'd make a nice roast. What about you guys? Mark. Mark. All right, here's a chicken tractor. As you can see, it's a triangular shape. There's about seven chickens in there, six hens and a rooster. There's a door on the back here, which opens up, and you can get your eggs. Right there. And you can see inside. And it's pretty easy to open and close. There's also a door on the other side. And there's some eggs. And you just take your eggs. And the chickens don't even know. They don't, they're not bothered. And then on this side, there's a little door here to feed your chickens. There's little handles to move it. I'll be putting wheels on soon. This is a uh, chicken wire. That's our rooster there. Big with the green tail. There's a uh, treated wood on the bottom. And there's a little watering station. You just open the, the lid and fill it up. Keeps it clean. It goes down through a little hose into a PVC and to these little uh, nipples. And the chickens learned how to use those. We had to train them, but once they learned, they got their water. And over there you can see a ladder. And this you can actually, by pulling the string over here, there's the string that you pull. makes the ladder go up and this keeps the coyotes out at night and keeps the chickens in if you want to move the tractor or uh, you can close it and service it so I'm going to close it now show you the way we clean it here's a little service panel here and this comes right off. As you can see. And inside there's, uh, you know, some pine needles. Whatever you got, leaves, pine needles. And this is a roost bar in here. Chickens sit on that at night and sleep. And then they lay their eggs in the nest. And they only use one nest. It's kind of strange. But they keep that one nest and lay all their eggs there. And don't use the other one. And that's the chicken tractor. It's got, uh, you know, specially treated wood. This is cedar with, uh, you know, I, I stained it and coated it with varurethane and put little brass handles on and then I sealed the little cracks with some clear silicone and got it all airtight and treated and then you can see that the inside is not treated. That's where your chickens are. You don't want that stuff getting in your food. And this actually, I let it sit out in my sprinkler system. This right here has been watered every day for an hour, and it's still still looking good. It's been, you know, all year it's been watered every day. And uh, maybe once a year I might go put a new coat of our urethane on to keep it nice looking, but that's about it. There's, there's your little water stand little handles and your chicken. That's the rooster. And some hands. 
So here is um, the chicken coop that I'm working on. And uh, this is the roosting area. Um, I'll be able, to, uh, be able to just open the door and reach in here and grab the eggs. The eggs will be back in there, nice and dark. Um, here is their, you know, root, rooting around area. I may, um, I think I'm gonna probably put a, a screen on here, on the door, uh, some sort of window, or maybe just be able to open the door, maybe a better solution, and have it fenced in here so they can't get out. So they can just, I can open up the door, even though it may be a little dark there, I may have to do like um, a sliding door or something here. Um, all I need to do is put another piece of wood here, um, and here's one side, and maybe attach something up here, and I could do a sliding door or something. You know, maybe just slide over. I haven't decided yet. And over here, another entrance to the coop. And I did, as I put this wood down, basically to protect the metal and from the scratching and everything I imagine they're going to be doing. And I put some, uh, some caulking in between. Um, and uh, hopefully this is going to do. I'm going to put a, a door in this side here and they'll be able to basically go out into their little yard here when I let them out basically. Have a little door that I can let them out. Um, so that's it. I still probably have to do some venting and other things. Um, I'm probably going to put a heat vent in up, up top here. I don't see any vents up here. Nope. So I'm probably going to put um, some venting. I get nice wind blowing this way, so at least it will cool. So maybe some uh, venting up top on either side. And on the top part is just my tools and stuff. So I've been organizing tools, found up house tools. And uh, as you can see, I built my own shelf. Uh, these are $70. To buy one large and two smalls is going to cost me $70. Ridiculous, right? $75. So, like, all this I built, built has uh, very little money. These boards are very cheap on there. This is to stop the eggs from rolling out. <laughs> but anyway. Roundup's house in Japan. It's kind of like an Airbnb for individuals who want to learn about found ups and found ups are ideas for helping to save our planet um, you can stay here at no cost just become a member of found ups for as little as three bucks a month or whatever when you come here you can stay here um, not indefinitely for a week or two weeks or whatever and help out um, our expectation is to help out three hours a day doing found up stuff you may help out um, you know, doing projects. Uh, we got other projects along the river and stuff that I'm working on. So, um, kind of a, think of it as an Airbnb for sustainable living, where I want to teach people basically how to transform their home, which basically is just well, it just goes down in value unless property and taxes and land hasn't gone up. But there's really no benefit to creating a food forest. Um, uh, you know, fish and chickens and having it all work together, composting, all of that, you can learn from me. It's not hard. And ultimately, everyone on the planet needs to start thinking this way and living this way and creating more food than they need to share with their neighbors to allow folks to be able to live for free, to come together um, and make the planet a better place that's my vision so come visit we're also sitting houses in shikoku uh, i plan to set up a house in florida if you want to set up a found up house it's easy all you need is become a patron of found ups and then talk to me i'll tell you i'll teach you the next next uh things to do thanks